Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I'm going to be starting my next series of Beatles videos and that series will be me showing my singles and EP collections. Now I've been putting this video off literally for about two years and that's just because every time I think about doing it I find out there's a crucial piece which I need to get before I do the video because I was, I was hoping to have kind of as many of the major pieces as possible before I do the video so I don't have to do like a million updates of it. Now before I get started I will just uh, apologise because uh, today is the 5th of November therefore chances are the video may be punctuated with a few fireworks going off in the background outside from lots of pe lots of different people's gardens so I can only apologise for that but um, if there are any then we'll just have to plough through it and uh, do our best. But anyway, so, in this video, the singles I'm going to be showing are from 1961 to 1963. So, the very first single in that range is one that they did with Tony Sheridan back in 1961. And that is My Bunny. Now, this came out on the Polydor label. And this is my personal favourite of all the tracks they did with Tony Sheridan. Has got a name on the label there, unfortunately. But this is a hard single to get, and it's backed with the Saints, as in the Saints go marching in. Now this is this is the second version of the My Bunny single on Polydor. That because sorry about the fireworks, which I'm sure you just heard there, because on the very first press and it looked very similar to this, except there was a much wider font on everything from the My Bunny and the Beatles to the catalogue number here. Basically, all the text on the label had a much wider font. But well, this is still a very early single, credited to Tony Sheridan and the Beatles. And it's a fantastic song in my opinion. Alright, so the next single is the first in the Beatles kind of official catalogue, if you like. And that is Love Me Do, their first single on Parlophone. And it comes in this really nice early 60s sleeve here. I really like the design on that. Now, when this single was first released, it came out not on the black and silver Parlophone label, but on the old-style red and silver Parlophone label. So basically, it's a bit like the Please Please Me, the album, first coming out on the gold label, then switching to the black and yellow labels. The first two singles first came out on the red label, and then switched to the black and silver labels. But anyway, this is it, and this was released in 1962. And it's got a nice tax code on there, KT tax code. And it's backed with, hang on, bear with me. It's backed with PS I Love You. Now, you, for Love Me Do, you can get two different types of red label pressing. And you can get ones with Made in Great Britain, under the little Parlophone logo there, and ones without. And they were both released at pretty much the same time, but there's just different variations you can get. Now, apart from a little initial on the on the uh, push-out centre, it's in good condition, this one. Despite having a few marks, it plays through well. So I was very pleased to get this last year, I think it was. Now, the next single I have to show is another copy of Love Me Do, except this one is on the black and silver label. And it comes in the same type of sleeve as the last... Uh, but as the last version of Love Me Do, although this may be a, a reproduction, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it's nice anyway. So there's the label, and this has the sold in UK text. You can actually get a version without the sold in the UK text as well, which comes before this, but obviously after the red label. And one thing that surprised me about both this and the red label Love Me Do is that they have a Lennon McCartney songwriting credit when. Most of their early songs, like the ones that appear on the Please Please Me album, are credited, are credited to McCartney Lennon, so it's quite interesting. But anyway, this is the black one of the black label variations, because there are quite a few. And some of the early black labels can actually be just as rare as the red labels, certain variations of it. And here is the B-side, PSL of you. There we go. Now, if you've seen any of my Beatles album videos, you know I like to talk about uh, little variations between the presents. Now, 
the singles are actually even worse than the albums for having little variations between the different types. So you'll, you'll have to bear with me, but I'll, I'll do my very best to try and show you them. So in this on this version of the Love Me Do Black Label copy, if we look at the perimeter uh, text, it's got the Paul Fung Company Limited. Now, if you look, the start of certain words begin with capital letter. So as you can see, the Parlour Phone Company Limited all have capital letters. All has a capital letter. But obviously, rights of the don't, manufacture does, etc. So yes, yeah, so, so some words begin with lowercase letters. Some begin with capital letters. Now, on the next uh, version of Let Me Do, that will have changed. And here's another copy of Let Me Do on the black label with the sold in the UK text. Because it's got that sold in the UK text on, I would say that these presents probably came out about 1964. So I'll show you the perimeter text on this copy because it is exactly the same as the previous one in every other aspect. So if we look at the perimeter text now, it still starts with the Parlophone Company Limited. But as you can see, Every single letter is now in uppercase, so it's kind of block capitals all the way around the perimeter text, and there are no lowercase letters whatsoever. So that's one difference between those two presents. Now the reason I was uh, putting this video off so long, as I mentioned earlier on, was because there were certain pieces which I wanted to require before I filmed it. Now this is one of those pieces. It's an original first pressing of the Please Please Me single, which came out on the red parlophone label in 1963. Now, this is extremely rare, this single. And um, the reason I got it quite cheaply, actually, off Amazon is because it, the vinyl is absolutely scratched to hell. But anyway, I've taken it out of its plastic sleeve so you can see the 60s cover that it's got. And this is it, Please Please Me. And that's backed with Ask Me Why. And these do have McCartney Lennon credits. Now, there is something else which is very, very interesting about this single. Now, it's going to be difficult for you to see this, but I'll try my best to capture it. If you look at the push-out centre, it, it says very faintly, Best wishes, Paul McCartney. Now, when I very first saw this, I thought, OK, this is going to 100% be a complete and utter forgery however i posted it I, I posted a picture of it sorry in a facebook group which is full of beatles experts who really really know the stuff and the general consensus among them was that it's actually genuine now i have emailed quite a few beatles autograph experts and i'm waiting on a reply from them and if i do get a reply then i'll make a video and, and let you know about it but um 99% of the people that have seen it seem to think that it's authentic and uh, that there are one or two people on there who really are experts in their field so that was very very nice to hear so I may very well actually have a Paul McCartney autograph on there although um, you know I can't I can't prove it 100% yet but uh, if, if I do get definite uh, authentication from somebody then I will definitely let you know I mean, the funny thing is, the guy I bought it off from Amazon didn't even know about the signature. He didn't advertise it as being signed by Paul McCartney or anything. I just, I got it in the post on Wednesday this week and I had, I had a look at the centre. I actually thought it was just dirt initially until I looked closely under the light and I saw that. And then obviously I, I told you what happened afterwards. But I, it's incredible what happens. Anyway, so next up is a black label copy of Please Please Me. And this is in the standard uh, Parlophone bag. Over the series of videos that I'm doing on my single collection, you will see many different versions of this Parlophone sleeve. And this is a very dark green version. The green's very dark, and it just has the pound sign on the front, which is the Parlophone company logo. But anyway, so here's the black label. It doesn't have the sold in the UK text. And one thing I will point out, because it, it will become relevant on future variations that I'm going to show in this video, the catalogue number on the right hand side here uh, starts with 45-R, now that will change eventually. And the B side is still obviously Ask Me Why, here it is, Ask Me Why, and here's the uh, the back of the Parlophone sleeve, 
There we go. And this copy, please, please me, is identical to the copy I've just shown. So, nothing new here. It's in the same type of sleeve and everything. Um, however, this next copy, oh, please, please me, just let me see if there's anything. Uh, yep, this, this, sorry, this one's also the same. I've got the details written on handy slips of paper in the back here, so I, I can I can see the details nice and quickly when I'm doing this. So they're three of the exact same pressing. And is this one any different? Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, but I've got a difference here. So this single just happens to have been put in their slightly older, colourful sleeve. Um, but here it is anyway. Now, when I said before that the differences with the singles were worse than the albums, you were about to get the perfect example of what I mean by that. So I'm going to go back to one of the last pressings that I showed you. All right, here's, here's an example of one of them. Now, the difference is all to do with the recording first published 1963. Now, the R in recording is underneath sort of the middle of the 7 and the X of the 7XCE. So it kind of lines up with the 7 and the X there. Now, I'll show you what it looks like on this new present here. Right, so on this present, the R in recording is now underneath the C rather than in between the 7 and the X. So as you can see, the entire recording first published 1963 text has moved a little bit to the right. So yeah, it's it's absolutely ridiculous how minor these differences are, but it's it's it takes a lot of a lot of time to actually find all of them because sometimes they look so so similar, and it's only good, it's only something stupid that you can, that you can use to tell them apart. And this next copy of Please Please Me is just the same as the last one so yep nothing new there just same as before with the recording first published underneath the uh, c in 7xce all these different variations aren't necessarily different pressings of the single just variations of a press if you like like a variation a and a variation b now this next single however is a different pressing this is the third pressing now there is a major difference with this one, and that, well, major compared to the last one I showed you anyway. Now if you remember what I said a couple of minutes ago, the catalogue number for the previous versions of the single began with a 45-R. The 45 has now been taken away so that it just has R4983, whereas before it was 45-R4983. So that's a slightly more substantial difference there for this third person. And same on the B side, as you can see. Now, this next person is a fourth person. And th this has a, another major difference, and that this one has the sold in the UK text on it. So, again, I would say this probably was printed about 1964. And there's the B side. Also with the sold in the UK text. And this is a 1980s picture cover of Please Please Me. Not in the best condition, but I, I, I got this for like a pound somewhere once, so that's okay. Here's the back. I think this came out in early 80s, might be wrong. Now, I'll, I'll show you the, the single, okay? Now, I'm going to advise you all, do not be taken in by these 80 singles, because a lot of people try and pass these off as the original 1960s press, so I'm going to warn you, don't fall for it. Now, there's a dead easy way to tell if this is an 80s pressing, and that is because it's got a massive ear side written on the left there, and which the 60s pressings don't have. But there's lots of other little differences, such as the produced by George Martin credit, and if you look under there, it says mono rather than just 7XCE. But it's it's ridiculous how many people try and pass these off as originals when they're not. And there's the B-side, ask me why. It is nice that they try to stay, to, they try to remain faithful to the original label design, although for some reason this copy has a black centre, 
That's which isn't supposed to be the case. And now for the final Beatles single that I'm going to be going through in this week's video, From Me To You. Now interestingly, I believe that the B-side to this, Thank You Girl, was originally going to be the A-side. However, it was changed at the last minute. Now to be honest, I think Thank Me Girl and From Me To You are about equal in terms of quality. I think they're both terrific songs. And Thank You Girl is one of my favourite B-sides ever. So, to be honest... It, 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 I think either one of them would have been the number one had they been released as a single. So I don't really think it matters that for me to you was changed to the A side. But anyway, I'm going to show you the first variation that I've got. However, I'm not going to show it on this copy because I've got several versions of this variation. And as you can see, this one has a little label damage on the right there. So I'm, I'm just going to bypass that one. And I'm going to come on to my next version of this, still in the dark green parlophone sleeves. So let's look at the label. Recording first published 1963. And this doesn't have any sold in the UK text. Let's look at the back. Backed with Thank You Girl. This particular copy has a nice KT tax code in the middle. And it's these are still credited to McCartney Lennon here. Both of these songs. However, I believe these were the very, very last songs to be credited to McCartney Lennon. Because I believe the single came out in between Please Please Me, the album, and With The Beatles. And on With The Beatles, all the songs are credited to Lennon McCartney. So, some point between the release of For Me To You and the release of With The Beatles, the writing credits were permanently changed from McCartney Lennon to Lennon McCartney. Now, as I said, I do have various other copies of that exact same present, so I'll just bypass those. So I have, I have another one, two, three copies of that. So I'll move on to the second present of this. And that, yeah, I, I'm sure you can see straight away this one has some horrible label stickers on it. So I'll, I'll just bypass that one. However, one thing I will say about this single here, despite the fact it's easily the ugliest of them all, it actually sounds the best. And I, I always remember this one because of the very distinctive labels. But this one just sounds amazing. I don't know why. I mean, they all sound great. But this one in particular just sounds amazing. But anyway, I'll show you a, a much better version of the second press. So here, the text is a lot, lot thinner on From Me To You. A lot smaller. I, I think it's actually a better way to describe it. Rather than the previous person I'll just get one up so you, you can compare the two this is the previous one and this is the one we've got currently so as you can see the the two singles have very different font sizes and also the northern songs up there is a lot wider than it was before but yeah it's it, basically the distinguishing feature with this one is, is just the the difference in font size and that's all there really is to it. Again with a nice MKT tax code, I believe, or it could just be an MT tax code in the middle there. And this next copy is just the same as that one, and I believe this one is as well. Yep. Alright, so that's the end of this first video on my Beatles single series. I'll be sure to have another one up next Friday. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll definitely keep you posted about that Paul McCartney autograph. It is, it is um, from the people that I've shown it to, pretty much 100% considered to be authentic. But I'll, I'll be able to satisfy myself completely when I've got an official expert's response. So if I get a reply from any of those that I've emailed, I will let you know as soon as it happens. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time.